Right then, so today we're going to be restringing the Bar Telecaster with some of these Ernie Ball Hybrid Slinkies. As of a usual drill, got the guitar down on the table and resting on a, a towel. Always, if you're working on a, a guitar, always put a, a towel or a mat or something underneath. Stops the guitar getting scratched off the uh, off the table, off the bench, and likewise, if you're doing this on like your good dining table or whatever, it stops the finish getting scratched on the table. Okay, so first thing to do is we'll take the strings off and give the guitar a just general bit of a clean and polish. Now, we could just cut the strings, but it's good practice just to take the tension off them first. Um, modern guitars, it shouldn't be a problem, but particularly with older, older guitars with vintage tuners, they're a little bit more fragile and the, the shock of just suddenly cutting strings it's not always good news for the tuners. So if you're doing it in a controlled environment like this, just slackening the strings off. First, it gets them, it just takes the tension off and then we can unwind the strings. So with the, you know, the most of the tension's off those now. So just come along with a set of cutters. What I'm gonna do is cut here and take the, the strings through the body. The reason I do this is rather than just unwinding the strings and then taking the whole lot through is the bit of the string that's around the tuner. It's all curved and, and whatnot and just don't want it flailing around and running the risk of scratching the uh, scratching the finish on the guitar. So I've got this nice short length of string here. Tip the guitar over and just feed these through the body. Down at the, the neck end, just unwind these. These are vintage style tuners. I'll show you in a second when I put the strings on, new set of strings, how these work, but they're really easy to take the strings out compared to um, some other designs of tuner. In fact, there's one string that's popped out just of its own accord. Get the strings, just wrap those up so they're not going to make a nuisance of themselves and now concentrate on giving the guitar just a bit of a clean so I've got a duster basically take the any extraneous muck and dust off you know all sorts of bits of ground edges of pick that's come off when I've been playing the guitar just clean off the, the dust you know the guitar's been on stand as well as a just a bit of general household dust there. We'll give the fingerboard a proper clean in a second. But we're going to start just by putting a bit of polish on the uh, on the body. And I'm using Dunlop Formula 65. So this stuff, don't spray it directly onto the instrument. Spray a little bit. You don't need a lot. Spray a little bit onto a cloth. and then take the wet cloth, rub that over the guitar. This helps just get rid of any any grime that's on the, guitar, on the guitar and just helps keep it nice and shiny. The finish on this guitar is a poly finish as opposed to like nitrocellulose, uh, which is more of a hard, it's kind of really, it's like a plastic coating, it's, it's, it's poly. Um, it's a little bit easier to clean than the, the nitrocellulose. Personally, I prefer a nitro lacquer, um, but it's a wee bit more expensive and um, it tends to be on more like vintage style instruments these days. So that's the guitar body, just giving a quick once over. We'll do the same down the headstock end. Okay, so that's just a general clean up on the body. What I want to concentrate on now is the fingerboard. Now I was just going to go along and clean and condition the fingerboard, but looking at the frets, these could be a little bit shinier. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, possibly not very well. They're a little bit tarnished, um, as, as happens. They're, in, they're just looking at them, 
they're in decent condition you know i don't press down particularly hard with the strings i've got quite a light touch so there's not a lot of fret damage i'm not bothered about uh the general condition of the frets i just think we could do with a bit of a cleanup so what i'm going to do is get some some tape um just to protect the, the fingerboard give the frets a polish and then once that's done we can get in and clean up and uh, recondition the fingerboard wood because this fingerboard is looking quite dry so i'm just going to go and get some tape roll of masking tape i'm hoping i'm going to have enough this roll is getting down basically what we're going to do is just tape off the bits of the fingerboard that aren't frets basically so just covering the wood that means we can get in with some some polish and clean the uh, clean the frets up without marking the the fingerboard too much the polish i'm going to use it does leave a tend to leave a little bit of residue which i could clean it it's you know it's it could be cleaned out of the the fingerboard but it just seems to make sense to protect the fingerboard and save having to to do that cleanup job after the event I think this is the first video that I've made for YouTube for qu quite a while. I've been really a combination of things. I was really, really busy. And then when things were starting to die down, I uh, I got COVID, which sort of laid me up for a while. And after COVID, I had an awful lot of bother, as some people have reported with COVID being very, very, t very tired and fatigued and not really having a whole lot of get up and go which hasn't helped as you can see i have a an old wrist injury decided to flare up which has made guitar playing a little bit difficult and uh, oh yes i had f I had a bout of food poisoning last week as well which i would absolutely not recommend to anybody so yeah not been a whole lot of fun in uh, fatfish hq so that explains the uh, the absence of videos recently and content on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. But slowly getting normal service resumed. Okay. Now when we're getting up the neck to where the uh, the frets the space between the frets is narrower than the uh, the tape, rather than cutting the tape to size and just double it over like that so we're covering the wood but leaving the the metal of the frets exposed obviously i'm doing this because the fingerboard on on this guitar is rosewood so if you've got a guitar with a rosewood board or ebony, uh, pow ferro, laurel, you know, any of the sort of rosewood substitutes. Um, basic wet, unfinished wood. Um, the fingerboard benefits from a, a bit of cleaning and conditioning every so often. If the fingerboard is made out of, um, if it's like a one-piece maple neck, life's a little bit easier because the fingerboard would be lacquered. And you can just go in um, and not worry too much about damaging the uh, the actual wood because there's there's the lacquer on the fingerboard. But here we've got bare wood, so needing to uh, to protect it a bit. So this guitar, do this. To be honest, the strings weren't in desperate need of a change. There was still a little bit of life left in them, but I basically I noticed how dry the fingerboard was getting. So my main motivation for doing a bit of work on the guitar was more um, so I can get some condition around the fingerboard and give it a, just a general clean up. I'm not particularly heavy in terms of you know in, in terms of my my playing so strings generally do last me quite a long time. Um, you know, they don't they don't rust 
really quickly. I don't have particularly acidic sweat. I don't snap them very often because I'm not hammering them. I don't have a particularly uh, hard um, playing action. But uh, yeah, the fingerboard is looking quite dry. We've had some really warm, dry weather lately. So I said the guitar needed a bit of TLC. Okay, so that's the fingerboard uh, all tipped up. Next step is to get some metal polish. And as a polish, we're going to be using Brasso, the old favourite. So this is basically a, a liquid that has some abrasive particles in suspension in it. Uh, very effective metal polish. It leaves, like I said, a little bit of residue. Um, the, you know, those abrasive particles kind of leave a, um, like a, well, some just fell onto the towel there, like a, a little bit of a, a white dust. Um, God, it does not smell particularly pleasant. Um, so the reason for wanting to put the, for putting the, um, the tape over the fingerboard was, you know, any dust that kicks, gets left behind by the polish, the little abrasive particles will go onto the tape rather than getting embedded into the, the grain of the wood on the fingerboard. So we just we've got the cloth soaked with the, the polish. Just go along the frets, just give them a good rub. You can see the, the dirt coming off there. You don't have to use Brasso, there's other types of metal polish you can use. Um, you get fret rubbers, which you know basically look like a pencil eraser type of thing. Um, and they have a similar sort of sort of action that they just clean up any muck that's on the uh, that's on the fret, makes them a little bit shinier. The reason for doing this is partly cosmetic, they look shinier, they look nicer, you know, if you're gonna polish the guitar, condition the fingerboard and get it looking all lovely, why not? nice shiny frets as well but it improves the playing experience uh, you know, particularly if you like bending strings having nice smooth frets nicely polished frets the strings just whoops didn't mean to do that you know the strings will just slide over the uh, over the frets so much more nicely if the the frets are all polished okay so that's the frets polished I'm gonna go and stick this in a bin because it stinks so that done, take the tape off the neck. Right, uh, I'm going to put that in the bin as well. And then we'll get into cleaning the fingerboard. Okay, so cleaning the fingerboard is a two-stage process. What we're going to start off with is some lemon oil. Now, some people will say lemon oil, you can use that as a fingerboard conditioner. It's not ideal as a conditioner what is best for really is cleaning um, cleaning any dirt and grime out of the wood and then following it up with some sort of conditioner so what i'll do is just take that and just spray it on the fingerboard the reason i don't like using this as a, a, a fingerboard conditioner it does nourish the wood a little bit, I guess, because it's an oil, but it's not a natural oil. You know, the only lemony thing about lemon oil is the artificial scent that's put in. It makes, look at the dirt that comes off. Um, it's basically a mineral oil that has a lemon scent added to it. So it smells lemony, it's not artificially lemony, to be honest. Um, and as a mineral oil, it's good for cleaning the wood, um, but it doesn't nourish it as well as other products could. So we're using this purely as a cleaner. Let's go along. Give it a good scrub. You can see the dirt coming off, off the neck. So that's all just, you know, f oils from my skin, you know, dead skin. I guess particles of, you know, metal, I guess, off the strings and the frets and whatnot. All nasty stuff that you don't want there. So the lemon oil helps to release those from the wood. 
and clean it up. We'll just let that sit for a couple of minutes to, for the lemon oil to dry off and then we'll go in and put some conditioner on there. Right, so that's the fingerboard cleaned up. Now I'm going to go over it with some Monty's Guitars instrument food. This is basically uh, a wax, beeswax based product. And what this is good for is much better at than the lemon oil. It, it, it works as a conditioner. It nourishes the wood, like the name says, it's instrument food. Um, it's this, you know, similar to the idea of, you know, if you've got old furniture, um, you know, using beeswax on, on, on wooden furniture. This is a, say, a beeswax based product. So just get some of that onto a cloth, kind of rub it, get it warmed up, nice and soft. And then we just go along the fingerboard, I'll just put a dollop in each fret. Just get it on there. Now I'm not being shy with this because I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but uh, the fingerboard is looking pretty dry uh, at the minute. Not so so bad that the frets are starting to sprout out the end. So, you know, so when a fingerboard dries out, uh, the wood shrinks slightly and you're left with what we call fret sprout, where the, the frets are kind of sticking out at the end of the fingerboard and kind of cut your hands and be very uncomfortable when you're playing. It's not that bad, but certainly it's pretty dry at the minute. Combination of it's a while since I, I conditioned the fingerboard on this guitar. And the fact it has been pretty dry weather-wise recently. So I'm just going to put the instrument food onto the fingerboard. Go down, work my way along each fret. Just rub it in. Just work it into the fingerboard. So part of the action of rubbing it will help to get it into the wood. And in doing so, I'm just generating a little bit of heat, which helps to soften the wax and make it a little bit more malleable and it'll soak its way into the into the wood. This is probably bouncing the camera around all over the place, so possibly not the most relaxing viewing experience. I apologize for that. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit and, and soak in for a little bit rather than taking the excess off straight away. Uh, it's quite a warm day today, which is uh, which is useful. So I'm just going to let that sit for five or ten minutes, probably as long as it takes to go and uh, make a cup of tea. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Right then, a cup of tea and a biscuit later. Um, Instrument Foods had a chance to soak into the into the fingerboard. Just take another clean cloth, just go down the neck, and just give it a clean up. Take off any uh, any excess that hasn't soaked in. So on the, the subject, the, the instrument food. This is just the the, the regular instrument food. Is basically you know, just, like, just like the beeswax. Monty's also do. Monty's who are not sponsoring this uh, this video, but uh, I like their products and I'll, I like them as a company, so I'll talk about them. And um, they also do a what they call a relic wax, which is a bit like instrument food, but it's got a like a stain to it. So if you've got a fingerboard that looks particularly pale, um, what the the I think it's called Monty Presso. It looks like a little pot of espresso coffee. Um, it's like a coffee coloured wax, and you can use that in the same way as instrument food. Uh, and it does the same thing. It nourishes the wood and, and conditions it, but it also imparts a, like a stain to it. And the longer you leave the wax on, the darker the wood will will look. So it gets more of a stain. Uh, so if you want to, to darken your fingerboard, this I'm quite happy with the way this looks. So I'm just using the regular instrument food here. So that's the the excess wiped off. why it's good to, to change all six, all six strings at a time so you can get in and clean up the fingerboard and, and do all of this sort of stuff which you just can't do with uh, with all the strings when you're changing one string at a time. 
One last thing I'm going to do with the instrument food is just put some in the, the nut slots. The reason for doing that is it's a fat ball conditioner, it's a wax, and as such it's got slight like, lubricant properties as well. So it helps to reduce friction. You know, the enemy of, of, of state of tuning stability is friction. So if I just put a little bit, I mean, well, it's quite a bit of excess there, I'm going to clean that up. But just putting some instrument food into the, the nut slots acts as a, a lubricant. You can use pencil lead, it's good for that. That's why you sort of see uh, gu guitars with nuts made out of graphite, they're like self lubricating. You know, the graphite acts as a as a lubricant. I used to use, I think I've used pencil lead in here before, these look quite dark underneath. You obviously use pencil lead at some point, but yeah, the instrument food, just get, get some of that into the nut slots. It helps the strings to, to glide over the, um, over, over, over the nut and reduce its friction, which is important. Okay, so that's all of the, the cleaning elements of everything done. What we're going to do now is basically get the strings onto the guitar and get it tuned up. So, hybrid slinkies. And start with the the bass strings, I think. So, the peg head like this. Uh, I'm just gonna move, I'm gonna move the camera. Um, yeah, with a, a peg head like this, it's easy, I think, to, to work from the, the sixth string to the first. So, I know some people have seen them and the string guitars up. So this is a through the body stringing. So that well people when the stringing guitars up will put all six strings through. I prefer to just do one string at a time because you don't want the like this the five strings that you're not working on sort of flailing around and, and run the risk of scratching the finish. So we'll pull that through at the at the bridge, make sure it's it's come right the way through. And these are vintage tuners. Um, so what we've got is there's a slot there and in the middle of the slot is a, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a bit. Yeah, there we go. In the middle of that slot, there's a, there's a hole that the string goes down into and then wraps around. I think these are Aside from the very modern uh, locking tuners, these are my favourite favorite design. They just work really well. So with the bass strings, we want a good guide. It's like two and a half tuning pegs worth of slack on the string. So we're going to tune, we're putting the sixth string in. So one, two and a half. Cut it there. So the string goes down into that hole, bend it, let's see what I'm doing here, put that in, bend it at 90 degrees, and then wrap it around, around the peg head. Like that, underneath the, uh, the string as it comes out the capstan and just tune it up. Well, I'm not, we're not gonna tune it up completely yet, but we'll just get some tension onto it. So taking all six strings off the guitar, which is good because we can get in and, and clean the fingerboard. Think to be a little bit careful of when you're taking all the strings off a guitar. Um, I just, as I discovered uh, the other day, I was restringing my Les Paul. It's a particularly hot day. We've had some, a bit of a heat wave in the UK, and um, a particular day, I think it was, it was up into the thirties in this part of the world, which is pretty unusual. But I've taken all the, all the strings off the guitar, and uh, one, two, and a half. Um, 
you put the fingerboard conditioner on and it, I got sidetracked. I just basically sat probably with, with the strings off for a couple of hours or so. But even in that short space of time, just with the, I think the, the temperatures we were having, it was enough to kind of relax the, the, the truss rod. You know, it's, it's fighting against, in, in here, it's fighting against the tension in the strings. And without the strings, the the way the truss rod was was basically curving the neck, it was enough for some of the frets to start actually lifting up ever so slightly. Um, and needed the needed hammering, hammering back down, and that was in the space of like a couple of hours. So I guess just to be a bit mindful of if you are working on a guitar, with all the strict strings off on it's a, if it's a hot day, don't leave the the strings off for too long. Um, the guitar may not get on particularly well with, uh, with having all the tension off the neck on a on a warm day, and just the, the little factors can combine to uh, to give you problems. Nice thing about the uh, Telecaster is it's hard to hasn't got hasn't got a tremolo. Taking all six strings off a. A tremolo equipped guitar, particularly something like the Floyd Rose, you know, makes this sort of job a little bit more arduous. But uh, with a, a hard tail, it's uh, it's certainly a lot easier. You can just tune tune the strings up, and tuning one string doesn't particularly affect the tension on the other strings. We haven't got the, the tension of the strings pulling the bridge, uh, pulling the bridge bridge down and slackening and slackening the other strings off. Okay, on the plain strings, generally I would say rather than two and a half, maybe it's more like three tuning pegs worth of uh, slack on the string. So it's like all the batteries round. Something I've talked about on other um, like stream changing and setup videos, well, I'll mention it again, is you know, when should you be changing your strings? You know, how often should a set of strings get changed on a guitar? Like I said, these strings didn't particularly need changing. There, were, there, there, was, there was a bit of life left in them, but uh, I just wanted to condition the fingerboard. Generally, if you, you feel that your strings need changing, then you've gone too far. Um, when you get to the point where they feel a bit, they feel a bit rusty, a bit corroded, a bit rough to the the touch, then that's a sign that you've 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 really gone too far. Um, the strings start to like go off a little bit, go a bit dull. Um, you know, before there's any sort of visible visible corrosion, you just tend to notice that. Um, the guitar's not as not as bright. Now, if you play the same guitar day in, day out, you know that change in the uh, the state of the strings is a bit more. Um, you know, it's a bit more gradual. It's like you know, you don't you don't necessarily notice like your hair your hair growing, and you know, suddenly one day you're so crazy, I need a haircut. Um, so it is with guitar strings. You 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 may not notice that the the strings are sounding a bit dull. Um, like day on day, but they do just start to lose some of the clarity. So you know, keep a keep an ear open for how the strings are sounding. They start to feel a little bit less slinky under the uh, under the fingers. Like I say, if you get to the point where they're rusty, then you've gone to you've gone too far uh, without changing them. You just keep an eye on them. You, you, you'll, you'll, you, over time, you will get to recognise that. Oh yeah, the, the strings are they're just going off a little bit. They need, they need replacement. Less experienced guitar players, the, 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 the tend not to notice these things. And you know, I've had students come to me with guitars that they're, they're practically cutting your fingers because there's so much rust and corrosion. Because the, the sweat in people's fingers will attack the, the metal. That the strings are made of and different people's body chemistry do you know different people have more some people have more acidic sweat than others i'm quite lucky in that 
I my sweat tends not to be particularly acidic. I don't damage strings too much in, in, in that regard, so I can get a reasonable length of time out of a set of strings. Other people, maybe not so. But you know, if you're one of those unlucky people who you have quite, quite acidic sweat, um, you know, you will, you know, just just by playing the guitar, the, the sweat will attack the strings and, and corrode them and, and make them rust. That's when you need to uh, bear in mind that when you finish playing, you know, wipe the strings down with a clean cloth just to uh, you know, get any any sweat, any basically clean cleaning, you know, that, that that acid that you're leaving behind, clean that off the strings to stop it uh, corroding the strings while you're not while the, while the guitar is just sitting, not being played. The older your strings are, it affects the sound quality, obviously, as the the, the strings aren't as lively, and the strings just get weaker, and uh, there's a chance that more, more chance that the string will snap. Particularly if you're quite a quite a heavy-handed guitar player. Okay, so there's the guitar, six strings on. Let's get that tuned up. Just going to use a clip-on tuner for this, just to get, get the guitar roughly in tune. Go and get this roughly in tune because the strings will settle. Now some people say the strings kind of need stretching and get under tension and stretch. It's not so much that they the stretch and kind of become you know become thinner. It's more about the, as you as the tension on the on the string um, pulls it. It just allows it to settle and any so. Where the this, this, the string windings might be gripping against each other at the uh, at the tuning pegs, having a bit of tension there, just it'll pull the strings, and over time they'll, they'll just gradually kind of settle out. So the strings generally will go flat after you you first tune them up. Not the. I wonder, if the battery, I wonder if the battery is going flat in this tuner. It's not working particularly well. I'm going to try another tuner. One thing I haven't done um, as part of this job was checking the neck relief. Um, basically, the guitar was playing fine. So, you know, the, the neck relief is how much curvature there is in the neck, how the balance in the, the tension in the truss rod against the tension in the strings. You'll either put, you know, if the, the neck got a bit of a crown on it or a bit of a bow, you need to adjust the truss rod. I'm not bothering with that because I'm changing string gauge like for like, so I'm not putting any, it's changing the amount of tension that the neck's under. Uh, it's been playing fine. Uh, I, I just know from feel that I don't need to change that. And um, because I'm using the same string gauge, the intonation should be fine. So intonation, basically, if we look at the, the open note and the, the fretted note, they should be the same. The fretted note at the 12th or the 12th fret harmonic and the fretted note are the same. So basically, if, if there was a difference there, I'd need to adjust the adjust the intonation screws here to either lengthen or shorten the string. But as I said, the, the intonation was dialed in from, uh, from last time. All is good. So there you go. That's the guitar cleaned up fingerboard conditioned frets polished uh, new strings on tuned up i'm just going to let that sit for a little while um under tension get it up in the studio later and have a bit of a play but that is basically um you know get, get it tuned up properly um on the the, the, the tune on my pedal board that's the basic uh, the basic uh, job done uh, thanks very much for joining me
and uh, as always thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please click like if you enjoyed it and you want to see more please click subscribe and uh, if you got, want to leave a comment you're more than welcome but I don't always get notified by YouTube when people leave comments of there's something specific you want to ask me whether it's about guitars and guitar maintenance guitar playing music theory anything at all you're better off going here fill that form in send your question in comes direct to me and I can get around to answering your question in a future video okay that's all for now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time Bye for now.